Paul continues his tour of European driven hunts at Laubach Castle, where he and several dozen other shooters are thinning the vermin and filling the larder with a day after the big game of the German forests. Now, don't expect to shoot a lot of bullets on a driven boar day. Paul can shoot rodos, red hinds, red spikers, mouflon rams and various wild boar, but the chances are he will see only one or two of all of those. Imagine Paul's excitement when a pair of red deer walk into view. It was a, it was a uh, red spiker and a single hind. They come trotting through, stood still, and then trotted again through the clear bit. Took a single shot. Perfect. Great start to a great day. That's about all the luck a shooter should have. Here is a row going through the drive, which Paul correctly identifies as a buck, so not in season today. But then Paul gets luckier. <laughs> Can't believe it. No noise at all. All of a sudden, big sow was on the on the middle of the track in front of us, followed by a group of about twelve and another sow. because they were in a big group and then a single youngster come behind so I shot that just over the track perfect and then took a second shot through the trees but hit a bit of wood but I am just <laughs> so that is two for two one red deer in the last few one minutes ball. I know it's amazing that little boar, which was Paul's first shot was lagging behind the others because of an injury you can see it holding its front leg up after it's done, a beater comes by and a dog checks it's dead. So that should just about wrap it up for today. But no, the best is yet to come. Paul can't believe his luck. Absolutely fabulous. They said to me, if Charlie's in your seat, you will have no luck. A red deer, a wild boar, and now a fantastic mouflon ram. <laughs> I'm, absolutely, I'm still absolutely shaking. It takes me a lot to get me to shake. And I can see him coming. You come in. I said, yes, the ram is a ram. And uh, I took my time on him. I'm perfect. I'm over the moon. Done. Should we go home? No, no, not quite. I'm not that stage. It's not my style. <laughs> Paul is using a popular combination of kit for this hunt. Rifle is the Merkel Helix, a straight pull that cycles quickly when you're under pressure. He has the Zeiss V6 scope, which allows him to zoom in and out on game. Um, yeah, so I, I, uh, I could see with my eye that it was, it was mouflon because of the white spot on the flank. So I identified it as a mouflon, um, but we could only take rams. Um, and out of 200 metres, I couldn't see with the scope because I've had it down on, on um, five power, for obviously, for driven hunting. Um, so basically turned it up to 12 power, looked through the wood, see it was a ram, back down to five, not only because it's my lucky number, but also because it's, a, it's like a, a lower magnification, perfect for, for the driven shooting and freehand shooting. Cartridges are Hornady, which Paul tested the previous day at a nearby rifle range. He was offered a choice between the plastic-tipped Hornady ELDX and the lead-free solid ETX. We meet up with the distributor, Jens Tiggers, who explains the benefits of both, starting with the plastic-tipped ELDX. So that's um, probably the, the, the most advanced hunting bullet at the moment on the market. So on long ranges it will still open up, it will still um, give terminal performance in the game. But on short distance it won't shatter too early, you know, it will still have a controlled uh, penetration and exit wounds, which is preferred. However, um, this is a very streamlined design, as you can see, which is necessary to shoot long ranges, to have a better trajectory and less wind deflection. On uh, your left side, you have the new ETX bullet, which is a lead-free, non-splintering, deforming bullet, and with a very traditional shape, a round nose shape, and because of the bigger me plat of that bullet, you have the, the game reacts more visible to the shot. So uh, beside the, the overall uh, hit that the, the, the game receives, 
Um, here you have uh, a little bit more punch to it, um, and especially with uh, with the lead free, um, you want you want to see a reaction of the game to it to be sure that you hit it. No, that that gives you more uh, confidence and more more um, you know visible reaction of the game, and that's. Um, that's actually a bullet behavior people prefer here in Central Europe, Germany and, and surrounding countries because of that, you know, then if you shoot an animal, um, also if there is a group and maybe you have a, a potential chance of shooting a second one, you can only address that if you are sure that the first one is properly hit and will go down, so you have better chances to get a second shot on the second animal maybe. Paul chooses the plastic tipped ELDX. Less shot reaction, but better downrange performance. The drive stops at one o'clock sharp and Paul goes to collect the results of his shooting. He makes straight for his mouflon and sets it up for photography. A lot of big game hunting is about hair and makeup. Possibly one of the better driven mornings you've ever had. I would say it's in the top. The top. Number one. Yeah, absolutely. Well, action start to finish. Paul's next job is to gather up his game and granic it. The wagon is about to arrive and take both us and the carcasses away. While he's doing that, let's go back to the drive, to the moment a pack of terriers yaps past. They're onto a fox. It's a fox which gives Paul, who is a gamekeeper and sworn enemy of foxes, not just one clear shot. No, not just one, but... Two clear shots. Yes, two. And then another fox goes past. <laughs> Let's not talk about foxes. Because five is your lucky number, right? Aye. Did you shot at five animals there, didn't you? I did. But just a sec. There's only three animals there. Yes, these are game quarry. And there might have been a fox. Yeah, um, slippery little suckers, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I was at home, I'd have sacked myself, obviously with the pheasants. But uh, yeah, the first one come across the short ride. I missed it. Bang, bang. But the rifle worked really well. It recycled well. It was quick for the second shot, but it still missed. And then the second one actually come up. And he's so close, I could, and then he come across the ride and... Yeah, I missed him as well. He did, he reacted strongly. I mean, he, he actually rolled forward, um, but obviously the shot was in front of him. That could have been a bit of blood. Well. Yeah, I just think he just like lost his foot placement and so he dashed into the, into the cover and then whew, back the other way going up yours and you know, he missed. So yeah. Some you win. Hey, I'm happy. And happy he should be, not just because he's had a great day, but because he has another day ahead of him. It snows overnight and the wood is picked out in white, which gives us a chance to make Paul look dramatic. He is on a stand overlooking a quarter of an acre of bramble and Christmas trees and beyond it, the kind of big black wood that game likes to stick to when it's coming through. Behind him is an open area of cathedral-like beech trees where we see a few animals on the skyline. Now, he is not expecting good things. Why should he? After the day before, the gods of hunting will surely not favour him twice. They do. A beater comes and, as if he knows they are there, puts his terriers into the Christmas tree and bramble thicket that we've been watching for an hour. Out comes one boar. And out comes another. in the snow so we're always a bit sort of wary and yeah beaters coming to the back of uh, this young Christmas tree plantation and um, there's nothing 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 and all of a sudden a Christmas tree went brambles went everywhere dogs all erupted and then this bull which is down there come exploded out and uh, gives a perfect shot and struck this is brilliant. And then 
then there's another another one in there, um, smaller, younger one. Come out the front, and uh, dogs were fighting with it, and uh, come right through really close, and it just exploded. And again, the excitement. I shot a little bit quick and missed the first shot, but the second shot was good. So yeah, absolutely unbelievable. Five animals in two days is three or four more than most people get. But still, the action is not over. A roe doe makes its way through the woods. Again, Paul makes sure it goes down. And it's followed by a boar. You catch a glimpse of the animals through the trees. Learning from yesterday's mistake on the boar, Paul waits for a clean line of sight before he goes for it. Unfortunately, it's a miss, but Paul will need to look for it to make sure. If he finds any signs of injury, he can call in the tracking team. Still, perhaps, like me, you're starting to lose count. And this one doesn't help. Man's on fire. At the end of the drive, casting around, looking for that possible boar, Paul gets a surprise. He finds a roe doe. He really thought he'd missed that one, but reviewing the footage shows a clean heart shot. It ran a few yards and dropped in the thick stuff. It shows why every bullet has to be accounted for. Back to base and almost everyone has a story to tell, though none as consistently successful as Paul. He even finds his fox, so to speak. For others, it's all too much. Yep, it's Peter Carr from the shooting show. Well, he had just flown in from the Congo. It's been an immaculately run day by the Germans. They combine efficiency and tradition to make unforgettable moments for shooters like Paul. He is one of around 40 on stands throughout the forest. At the end of the day, the headkeeper Rudiger and our host, Johannes First from sports optics company Zeiss, hand out fur fronds to the successful. And the beaters, who have worked hard throughout the day, blow the end of a thoroughly memorable hunt. <laughs>